Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Red Pill Tamales Podcast. I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What up, brother? Hello. Man, let's get right into it. We have a very special guest. Uh, some would say celebrity chef. Some would say um, outspoken member of the community who has called out government overreach and uh, has gone viral. And um, man, let, let's just dive in because I'll do your intro when we're done. Yeah. Uh, I'll have Rob give like the whole resume. Sure. But um, what part of Jersey are you from? I'm from uh, Somerset County, kind of by like New Brunswick. Okay. Um, fun fact. I went to a fancy pants prep school in New Jersey. Which one? Uh, Petty. I went to Pingree. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's see? crazy. You see, Rob? I know, Pet- I know Petty really well. We used to go down to Petty. I mean... For all sporting events, you name it. Yeah, good old uh, Petty Lake and all that. Um, yeah, man. So uh, I, I listened to a few interviews uh, you, you've done uh, with like Michael Berry and uh, Hotep Jesus and Red Pilled America. And um, so, yeah, man, it seems like 2020 really was a curveball. And, you know, when Newsom, when Newsom's hypocrisy hit the scene, uh, you took a chance and, and decided to... Uh, uh, make a statement. So uh, how, how are things currently, man, in California? What's the vibe? Things are still only at 50% capacity. Look, man, what this has done to the to the consumer psychology, to the mindset of consumers, especially in California, you know, I tell everybody, I'm like, California is not like the rest of the United States out here. I mean, it is gloom and doom and fear mongering and sensationalism. People are afraid to leave their homes. Um, You know, everybody's double masked outside at all times. So the effect that that has on the industry, it's it crushes it. So and then when they just start to peel the layers back and they're like, oh, you know, you can open out 50 percent capacity, et cetera. People aren't going out. Yeah, I I blame the mainstream media. I feel like people getting brain damage and uh, there's just psychological trauma. Um, I know you've spoken a lot about the tribalism that comes with politics and how people just, you know, you just watch CNN and this is what you believe. And uh, it's unfortunate because the psychology that you're talking about in terms of people not having that confidence, you know, to go out and spend, you know, what's going to happen? Man, what do you feel the ramifications, you know, economically? It's going to be years. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't just going to be an overnight fix because first and foremost, this is what I've been saying. The restaurant industry has been vilified as these, uh, you know, epicenters of spread through the entire pandemic. And then furthermore, restaurant owners, small business owners have been treated as these, you know, overlords, these wealthy landowners, if you will, mistreating the workers. And all we care about is profits over people when that's complete opposite. This, these are these are families, mothers, fathers, children, in our case, trying to just keep their business alive, not taking salaries, trying to make sure that their community is able to continue working. And we're pushing back against the unrealistic reg- regulations. And then we get vilified for that. So the effect that all of that has had on the consumer psychology is going to drive people away from going out to restaurants, especially in places like California, New Mexico, Michigan, New York. Uh, you know, Colorado states where these lockdowns have become a way of life. And then when you look now at the effects of all this quantitative easing, printing trillions of dollars and putting it into the economy, you're seeing uh, inflation across the entire supply chain from the processor to the distributor, to the workers through the supply chain, to wage inflation. And then we're going to see that get distilled into the end user probably over the next three or four months. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Prices on menus go up like 30 or 40 percent in the next three or four months. And that's going that's going to have a long term effect. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the Newsom recall is in full effect. Um, what's going on with that, man? What's the status? How, how are people feeling about it? Well, they're spinning it, right? So here in California, it's being spun as this crazy right-wing conspiracy theorist-driven recall, um, manipulation. And Newsom's done an amazing job. He's being vilified just for being for for doing the right thing, and uh, and nobody w- it would ever dare vote for anybody with an R next to their name. So I think what's going to happen is the recall has already been approved, so it's going to go to ballot. And the way it works in California is you get a ballot, and then the first question on the ballot is, do you vote to recall Newsom? If you answer yes, then you go to a page of 
candidates, alternates, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and right, you know, right now the leaders in that regard, of course, are like Caitlyn Jenner, Kevin Faulkner, who is the former mayor of San Diego, John Cox, who ran against Newsom a couple of years ago, wealthy businessman. Um, you got Major Williams, right? Who's who's you know a horse in the race. Heck, Chernovich's name is on the uh, is on the well. At least it was on the polls. I don't know if he's going to go on the ballot, but I don't even think the majority of people in California are going to vote for it to to vote yes on that first question, right? Because look, I talk to people in the industry all the time, people who have signed this recall effort and they voted for Newsom, they're hardcore Democrats. And they said, yeah, I signed the recall effort to signal to him we're pissed, Mm. but we're not going to actually vote him out. Oh, wow. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Okay. So you, as the person that you've been battling this month after month, and you hear that from people in your industry, do you have an initial response to them, or maybe after you talk to them behind closed doors? Well, yeah, but then yeah, then it quickly parlays into just like a conversation about Republican versus Democrats. There's really no libertarian effect here in California. Funny enough, if you're socially liberal in the sense that like a libertarian is, then you have to identify with the Democrats or else you run out of California. It's just kind of like the rule, right? Um, That's not that way across the rest of the country. It seems like libertarians have the tendency to be folded into, you know, kind of the right or right or leaning because Democrats are so crazy that libertarians are like, we don't want anything to do with this. Not in California. It's a little bit of a different flavor. So when I talk to people, they're just like, well, you know, we still, we, the last thing we would ever want to do is vote for a Republican in California. They're going to overturn environmental protections. They're going to overturn all, all the work that's being done for the homeless population. Mm-hmm. And then those talking parts start points start coming out. And when you look at what the talking points are, it's all propaganda, right? Like it is 100% propaganda. Nobody actually understands the granular detail in how poorly run this state is. Mm. If you were to look at it, or just from your opinion, and again, going month after month of dealing with all this in the industry, in, in the restaurant industry uh, specifically, can you justify anything that was done to keep you guys close, you know, minimize the occupancy to, to what actually has transpired? Yeah, within the first two weeks, right, when everyone was really in this together and we were shut down, I was totally OK with that. Right. The data wasn't out there. The science wasn't out there. All we saw was Chinese propaganda of people dying on the streets of Wuhan, which we all know which came to find out wasn't true, right? Remember those videos that went viral of people just dropping Mm -hmm. on the streets? So everyone kind of was like, oh, shoot, what is this? This thing's on our shores now. So I think we were all good for a couple of weeks to be shut down. So long as the shutdown, the forced shutdown was subsidized by either the state or the federal government, which ultimately was supposed to be the case. Of course, that got convoluted by virtue of government intervention. But um, we were in it for those two weeks. But then, you know, it was like, wait a minute. You know, we're we're going to the same grocery store over and over again. We're seeing the same people working there. We're interacting with each other. We're not getting sick. You know, some people are. Yes, there's certain circumstances. And then you start to see the patterns, right? The elderly, those with underlying conditions and these concrete data points started to take hold and be, become tethered in our in our everyday understanding of this virus within three to four weeks. Right. So it was okay. Well, why don't we ice? My thought process was, well, they're going to isolate the sick, isolate the risk, and subsidize those people to stay home. But like the young people, people who have already had it, the people who are immune by virtue of having already had it, they should be able to get back into the into the workforce. They should be able to work, run the restaurants, work work in retail. Wasn't the case, obviously. Well, we're broadcasting live from Texafornia <laughs> because yeah. because. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of new folks, you know, migrating over here, escaping the, the homelessness and the high taxes and the gas and, and the lockdowns. I mean, I'm amazed that for the longest time, California wasn't allowed to dine outside. That's amazing to me. And then we I, see, uh-huh. Makes no sense. How, how long did that go on? Or is that still going on? That went on for months. And it makes comp- no sense at all. Because, and I said this, this was, was my rant. I go, watch what's going to happen. Within two weeks of shutting down outdoor dining, cases are going to skyrocket because it's going to drive people in from from public settings, right? Safe public settings. We know that being outdoors is safe. It's going to drive them from pay, safe public settings with accountability, right? Because even people who are like anti-mask, if they're out in public and other people are wearing a mask, they're like, yeah, I'll wear the mask, you know? So when you're in a public setting, you're holding yourself to a different level of accountability 
that you are if you're having a backyard party or you're having a neighborhood jam or something along those lines, right? So I go, it's going to drive people into closed spaces, indoors, and cases are going to skyrocket. And it's exactly what happened. Cases skyrocketed. They shut down outdoor dining, crushed restaurants. It did nothing to the spread, made it worse, in my opinion. And then they just kept doubling down on that. It's insanity. Yeah, the ego kicks in and, um, you know, the tribal politics. And, 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 you know, some would some would speculate like, OK, there's there's this evil scheme because they're vilifying the restaurant industry. Uh, big box stores, you know, Costco's and everybody, they're able to stay open. So. You know, sometimes sometimes we get our tinfoil hats. Uh, we Where's a, your hat, man? Yeah, I know. I, I, Damn it. I, I always forget to make it. But, you know, some people look at the, the ramifications and just the policies and some would speculate like, bro, it seems like y'all are purposely trying to smother and shut down all small businesses, the, the restaurant industry. And now what we're seeing with, uh, you know, the unemployment stuff where it's hard to get some of the restaurant workers back to work. So it's just this crazy shit show. Yeah, yeah. And look, you know, I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's some coordinated scheme to shut down small businesses because I don't give our elected politicians enough credit to be able to pull that off, right? <laughs> like, I don't think that they're intelligent enough to coordinate. Or organize secretly. enough. Yeah, or, or yeah, to or secretly to execute a plan like this. I mean, have you ever been to the DMV? Mm. These guys can't manage their way out of a paper bag. So, the, the you know what I think it is is that they don't care, right? There's an apathetic indifference to these small business owners because who are they? Okay, five people, ten people, twenty people in their minds, right? Five hundred times over, right? So if I've got five business owners that I'm hurting that don't know anything. Now, if I target an Amazon or, or, or a big box corporation, now it's like I got to deal with the board of trustees. I got to deal with Bob, who's one of my lobby, uh, lobbyists or mm -hmm. one of my campaign pain donors. I'm dealing with corporate America has merged with the government. So now I'm dealing with the elite mm -hmm. and they don't want to deal with the elite. So it's much easier to just take out the low lying fruit, which are these uh, unprotected small business owners without cash on the balance sheet. They don't have a legal team. And that gives these governors the opportunity and these elected officials to say, oh, look at these tough decisions I had to make. I didn't want to do this. This hurts me. But we've put a fund together now to give these small businesses $10 million and blah, 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 mm -hmm. based upon these strings. Oh, and you got to vote for me. See, I made this tough decision and it was so hard, yeah. but I rectified it and I saved lives because of it. We're bait. Right. Like mm -hmm. we're the bait, mm -hmm. the low line fruit. Mm -hmm. They could never do that with the big corporations because they wouldn't allow it. You think so? Considering how much money, especially let's say California, a lot of the revenue for that state comes from small businesses, from restaurants. And even knowing that we, we still don't have an actual idea of why they would just not care as much. Right. Well, because they knew that they were going to be able to get federal funding, which they did. And now they're sitting on a budget surplus, which they're using as a talking point to say that Newsom runs the state so well, he's sitting on a budget surplus. But the budget surplus is federal money, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, 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 it's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah. And the other piece of it is that now he's increasing taxes around the horn, right? So these taxes, and don't get me wrong, like Silicon Valley and a lot of those venture capital firms, a lot of those big businesses that did reap benefits through this pandemic, they are paying a higher share of taxes by virtue of that at the at the you know at the um, expense of small business. But still, it's a drop in the bucket for them. Newsom gets that money, and then increasing taxes. He talks about this budget surplus. That's to me not a you should not brag about a budget surplus in the middle of a pandemic. If there's, if you're sitting on $50 billion, then why the heck aren't you giving $50 billion out to the small businesses mm -hmm. that you just crushed, to the families that you just put on the streets? Homelessness is running rampant. I mean, it's disgusting out here. Mm -hmm. And you're t bragging about a $50 billion surplus and everybody's like, great job, great job. Yeah, and meanwhile, French Laundry, the restaurant, got a nice little kickback uh, what, what do they call that when they uh, cut them a check? What was it? Two point seven million or something like that. What? Yeah, yeah, they got they got they got immediate uh, funding from PPP. Newsom's wineries did. Is it not coincidental too that the county that Newsom's wineries are in never had to face the strict restrictions uh, that all mm. the other counties did? They never did. 
they they had some restrictions, but they were always in one of those better tiers, just coincidentally. Dude. And he during during the Fourth of July, right? So I talk about you know in California, coastal restaurants. Our our uh, Black Friday, where we go from red to black, is Fourth of July week, right? Everybody, it kicks off the summer in Fourth of July because you have you know I don't know if you know California, but you got June gloom. Like June is the worst month. It's just 60 degrees and cloudy mm-hmm. all the time. Then July kicks in and that really kicks off summer in California. Everybody comes to the beaches, summer goes off. So we were so pumped about 4th of July this year because we were like, okay, finally we can hire, we can staff, we can do everything we need to do. Wednesday before the 4th of July, we purchased all of our inventory, all of our restaurants along the coast, double staffed, giving everybody the hours that they wanted. On the Wednesday of 4th of July, Newsom's like, Oh, I'm shutting down the public beaches, beaches, outdoor beaches. Okay. Shuts down public beaches. His wineries are open. All right. We get totally crushed. We have to shut down. We lose all the product. I paid the team members because I'm not going to screw them over. Right. Monday morning, he reopens the beaches. Mm, mm, mm. What? Yeah. See, it's stuff like that where it goes from, hey, guys, we're just trying to say one life saved is worth yeah. it not not factoring in the balance of hey man these are people's livelihoods like what who's going to measure the long term deaths and low quality of life due to you wiping out a whole industry so that right there is a fuck move yeah. that is a fuck boy move to to shut it down for to to kill 4th of July now Um, Our current president, uh, he doesn't sound like he wants us to have a very lively 4th of July. Therefore, me and my little nuclear family (laughs) are going to go all out. Um, So speaking of restaurants, Newsom and shutdowns, one of the counties where Fresno, I guess where Fresno is, um, he had it set to red or some shit. And then him and, you know, many people's favorite comedian, George Lopez, were out there shooting a little PSA. And uh, we sometimes give Lopez a hard time on this show. Yes. <laughs> because, With good reason. Because he goes so hard for, for uh, politicians that, that are pro-lockdown. We're anti-lockdown like that. So I wonder if they got a kickback, the Fresno restaurant. Oh, that's interesting. We should look into that. Well, he was there to give them a check. Mm. Oh. So he was at that restaurant. So it wasn't just a TikTok that they were doing. Yeah, to publicize this new small business relief program, and they were giving them a check. Mind you, nobody was wearing masks. They were eating indoors. Like, who on his PR team thinks this is a good idea? And then I posted that up. I posted all those videos up of the pictures of him and Lopez without the masks on and doing all their grab ass and what have you. <laughs> and I got completely wrecked on social. Totally wrecked on social. Like uh, The people went to defend him, huh? It's the whataboutism, you know? I mean, it's like, but, 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 but. I mean, nobody will accept a loss, right? Like I'm the first to admit when I screw up, I'm the first to admit when somebody who I kind of throw my support behind screws up, like that's called being real, authentic, being human. Nobody wants to do that nowadays. And I talk about that during the pandemic, right? Sports totally shut down. And you know what I noticed? Everybody who used to be into sports suddenly turned into like an armchair political scientist knew nothing about politics before, but they picked their side and they started throwing their support behind a politician or a party like they would a sports team. So, you know, it's like, remember when Michael Vick got busted for all like, you know, the the dog fights and everything, Mm -hmm. every Falcons fan was like, who cares? Vick's a good guy. He was beaten as a kid. And like, right. All these excuses, because you want that Vick name on the back of your Jersey. Like you're Mm going to stick up for this person, no matter what. And I love it, man. I love that. Like loyalty. We're doing that now with politics. So like Pelosi goes out and gets her hair cut and, you know, whips her hairdresser in public and this and that. And everybody's like, what do you mean? Pelosi can't get her hair cut. She's an important lady. Like she can break the rules. It's like she's the Michael Vick of the of the political world or (laughs) or or use any name. Right. Yeah. How many times have I not said that about politics and sports? Like for months, oh, yeah, I've been yeah. saying that that's exactly what it is. And it, it's it's yeah. real bizarre, man. It's real crazy. People do pick their sides. When it comes to you and starting, since we're talking about social media, how, what what came over you that you decided to be as outspoken as you were when those first couple of videos went viral? Well, I started speaking out about this right when the lockdown occurred. Going into the, going into the pandemic, I was like, 
I always told my wife, I'm like, you got to make sure I remain apolitical. Like, <laughs> it's just not good for business. It's not good for this, what what have you. Like, and I always tried to get involved by virtue of like food politics and food policy. I think that's a great vehicle through which you can actually bring sides together is through food. And when you look into food, the libertarian food system is one that I think is going to benefit everybody's health, et cetera. Another issue for another day. But Finally, when when the lockdowns occurred, I sent a tweet out way back in April and I was like, hey, I just don't understand why business owners can't support a safe reopening and also take this pandemic seriously. And everybody's Mm -hmm. like, see, that's what I'm talking about. Grandma killer, blah, blah, blah. Tweet goes viral. And uh, I'm like, oh, okay, this is the game everybody wants to play. I'll play this intellectual game of ping pong with all these morons. (laughs) And uh, it, it just parlayed. And then I still kept my mouth shut, but it was that that shut down on outdoor dining that I just lost it. Now sitting here with the kids in the house, and and I got the notice, and I'm like, Lauren, grab my phone. This is my wife. I'm like, just just I gotta get this. I gotta get this rant out. You know, no mm-hmm. take, no nothing. Mm-hmm. And I just videotaped it, and then that's when everyone was calling me an asshole. They're like, you're an asshole for wanting to open, and that's where I ended it. And I was like, I'm not the asshole. Newsom's the asshole. And mm-hmm. then of course that headline was what everybody grabbed, and they're like chef celebrity chef calls gavin newsom an asshole oh that's yeah. so funny far right yeah uh, culinary <laughs> Q-na- Q- culinary yeah culinary yeah, yeah exactly it, that's that's good that's, yeah, that's you can have that one. <laughs> hey rob's on fire this morning i am sorry so um i know you have restaurants uh, and franchises and things across the country do you have anything in houston we can support yeah yeah, well, we're opening in Houston. So we partnered with Mac Hike um, he, out there. He's our uh, franchise partner and investment partner, too, as of recent. So uh, I don't know if you know Mac Hike. Who doesn't people. know Mac Hike? Oh, yeah, Mac yeah. Hike Chevrolet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he's my, He's now my, it's him and I. He's my partner in this business. Um, what, is it going to be a uh, slapfish? What's that? Is it a slapfish? Yeah, for slapfish. So oh, we're going to be opening in Houston in the next year or so. We're going to go hard in Houston. Um, so we're, we've stopped franchising and now we're doing kind of regional development. So we're going to really build out the Houston market, build out the Phoenix, Arizona market and, and then the SoCal market. It's going to be kind of that like region. Well, I'm uh, making a prediction here. It's going to be gangbusters. Hell yeah. Uh, Slapfish Houston is going to be, uh, mark my words. It's going to be like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> So um, I, I love that you have a history with food trucks that, that you started with uh, food trucks and uh, Houston's a big food truck town. And uh, hey, just throwing it out there, man. Maybe we'll do lobster rolls and tamales or something. Ooh, <laughs> lobster roll and tamales. I love. I'll tell you what we. Uh, so I, I really want to open a taqueria out here. All all the guys who have been with me for years, it's like we basically are running a little taqueria out of the back of the restaurant, and uh, every year we do lobster tamales. Oh, oh wow! Shit. And then we also do like these crispy deep fried lobster tamales. You, 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 we can't. We, I don't mean to bastardize it, but they're really good. But lobster separate and tamale, just lobster rolls and tamales. Let me know when. Let's do it. Hey, yeah. that's a hey, great idea. So uh, my touring was not that great in 2020. So let me get some capital going again. <laughs> uh, try to get some of these STEMI checks and uh, some of this unemployment, <laughs> and I'll definitely get back to you. Maybe we'll start with a cart instead. Got to tap into that safe moon, man. Into That's the who? Funny. Tap into the what? Into Safe Moon. Was that a uh, crypto? Yeah, I'm joking around <laughs> with all these new cryptos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to yeah. the moon. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm a laggard on that on that front. But yeah, we're excited about Slapfish coming to Houston. Speaking of restaurants, not to interrupt you. Are you gonna when you talk about a, a taqueria? Are you talking about in California? Like, are you willing to do more business in California? I mean, yeah, Orange County is not a horrible area, and um, I'll, I'll probably be driven out of California at some point, to be honest with you. They've already hit me. Five days after I went, I went on my Newsom rant, I got smashed with a complaint by the Labor Commission on every single business I own. They said it was a labor complaint, and they named businesses that are management companies that have no no employees. Then they proceeded to uh, subpoena three years of my records, all my labor, payroll, bank accounts, everything. I provided all of that. I had to get an attorney. I had to fight all of this since they couldn't find anything there. Then they sent letters to every single person I've employed for three years. That's thousands of people across, right? 10 businesses, three years. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Um, asking all the employees with a questionnaire, have they ever done anything wrong to you? Have they ever mispaid you? Have they ever missed overtime, et cetera, et cetera. They're on this massive fishing expedition to take me down. So who knows where I'm going to end up? And see, that's the type of stuff, Rob, yeah, man. I be talking about. See, to me, 
that goes beyond a little bit of incompetence mm-hmm. and you know they just want to save a life you know one life saved is, is what we're going after i don't know man that that's one thing i it really rubs me the wrong way and you're gonna see that from more states like you know i don't want to call them all out because there's tons of them but uh whitmer is one of them i believe in michigan yep. and there's gonna be a lot of other governors that really the light's gonna be on them and you're gonna see what kind of evil shit they're trying to pull on some of the, like gyms and restaurants and small businesses what, what state is that whitmer I believe it's Michigan, right, Jeff? Michigan, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah She's yeah. bad. She's yeah. bad. And all of these, all she's the one who who tried to basically commandeer like a private ship for her own vacation when she was shutting everybody else down. They're all hypocrites. They're all elitists. That, I mean, it's and and they look at this as like you you if you overstep your boundaries, we will take you out. And 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 when you get in those there, those crosshairs, they will do everything because who cares, right? I'm, I've, I've racked up $70,000 in legal fees right now. Mm. Nobody's, who's going to pay for that? I can't go back. It's not a lawsuit in the sense that I can now go after legal fees because this is just ordinary everyday business for the government. Mm. Damn. So they can just bury me in red tape. And that's what they try and do. You speak out against – this is communist shit here, right? Mm-hmm. Like you speak out against the state. It's just a little bit more nuanced. It's like communist light mm. or American Marxism. Yeah, that's why, I mean, as amazing California is, the people, um, you know, everything about California is great, except for that, the government and the shit that they do. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I know Orange County and Huntington Beach is different than L.A. County and all that. But, um, man, with the amount of pressure they're trying to put on you and your family, I'd get the hell out of Dodge, bro. Yeah. I know we're we're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, we might be neighbors because, um, t- like I said, Texas has a friendlier business climate. Uh, you have a hell of a partner with Mac Hike, and we love to eat. <laughs> and everybody that listens to this show loves to eat good yeah, food. Yeah, we love to eat and we love to support um, everything that you're doing. Shift gears real quick because I know you're a highly effective person. I mean, for you to juggle so much and you have a family, what are some of the routines and habits that that you do that keep that keep everything uh, in order. I mean, I, look, I'm all, I'm constantly working out. I use work to work out too. Like so, you know, some of my routines is just like I, I I don't walk slow. I walk incredibly fast everywhere I go. I'm hands on when I get into the restaurants. I don't loaf. I'm always hands on. So like getting in the line. If I want to learn about what's happening in the kitchen, I get online. I hop on pantry. I hop on grill. I work a few hours on the line. That's the easiest way to know. I don't do this kind of like general audit. But most importantly, just surround myself with good people. I like to surround myself with young, inexperienced workers who learn the right way um, because there's no egos involved. And I love giving people opportunities. Heck, right now, my, my area director of operation who's making significant amount of money. I mean, money he never imagined that he would be able to make. He's only 20 years old, started with me as a uh, dishwasher and counter sales guy. Brilliant, brilliant kid, just constantly overlooked because he's socially awkward. He's my right hand right now. Kid's 20 years old. Wow. The guy can do anything. And there's millions of stories like that within our organization. Not millions, tons of stories within our organization. So that's the key. Your team, you know, motivated team. Uh, taking care of your team members and then wife and kids, man, you are a family run organization. My kids are back here. They're going to come with me to work today. They're going to wash dishes, pick herbs, um, you know, do their homework along the way. So when we're working, it's seven days a week, you know, but, but it's part of our, it's part of our life, right? Like when you're a business owner, everybody's like, Oh, you got to separate life from work, et cetera. When it's part of your life and you enjoy it, you can have fun and you need definitely take off. Of mm-hmm. course I get that. Um, but uh, actually, we're hitting the road for a two-week uh, RV trip here. I'm going to be documenting all of our RV eats uh, uh, in a couple of weeks. But at the end of the day, like food is our life. Um, doing this is what we love to do. That's cool. Uh, uh, don't. What are some links for the uh, donation links and, and all the giving back? Tell us about all the give back you do. Yeah. Yeah. So so 86, the number struggle.com. That's the website that we use to raise funds. We're giving it to struggling out of work, restaurant workers, retail owners, small business owners, food truck owners, et cetera. You name it. And uh, I overheard a uh, well, I overheard. I heard you tell a story about uh, you and your wife physically going to pay people's rent and and hand delivering checks uh tell us about that experience well when we started raising all this funds right like we would get like fifty thousand dollars in a day at times and uh when it was really on heavy that was probably our big, biggest day but we we got in 50 we're like we we've got fifty 
to 100 people to give the money out to. So we're, we've got to be as fast as possible. We crashed out Venmo, Zelle, Cash App. They've all got like $5,000 limits. So eventually we were just like, screw it. We all got in the car. We started writing checks, driving around Southern California, paying landlords, paying business owners, paying people's rent, utilities, you name it. Damn. With everything that's going on in you know political climate, uh, the restaurant industry, and, and people's fear levels, and you know things are slowly opening up, where do you anticipate? Where where do we head from here? What what what's the future hold? Um, look, I think that there's going to be a, there's going to need to be a huge move on behalf of the small business owners to just continue modeling good behavior, pushing back against a lot of the propaganda, um, serving a good product. I think people need to really limit what they do. Do one thing really really well. Uh, we're gonna have to continue. We're gonna have to continue to pay our workers more money because I think that's part of the national conversation. But I think we need to do so in understanding that that comes with the need to decrease payroll taxes, right? So there's got to be a quid pro quo with the government. And that's that's something that needs to be lobbied on behalf of the small business owners. You know, if we lose 3% to the bottom line, which is our net profit, by increasing wages, which we should do anyway, then we should also gain 3% back by cutting payroll taxes. So it's a net zero for the business, a benefit for the workers, and it, and it, and it precludes the businesses from needing to increase their prices. So now you can continue to stimulate the local economy by having people People come in once more a week or what have you because the prices aren't too high, right? Mm -hmm. See how this is a wholesale wholesale approach. Um, so those are the types of conversations we have to start having. But I do think it's going to be a real slow ramp up. I worry about inflation. I think mm -hmm. everybody should probably, uh, you know, don't, don't go crazy when they're spending money right now because, um, you know, uh, saving and investing in the right businesses is the right move. Real talk. Yeah, since we're talking about investing, actually, what what are you? Because you made the the crypto <laughs> joke earlier. What are you seriously looking at as a way to hedge uh, where the inflation's going? Yeah, crypto. Crypto's huge right now. I think that's big. I think looking at, um, you know, um, look, look, renewable energy, of course, is always big. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean I think gas prices are going to continue to skyrocket. So I think investing in gas. Oil, um, you know, funds along those lines right now are big ETFs. I still really like QQQ. Uh, that's a good one. Look, I've got, you know, I, but I think at the end of the day, I don't like to invest in the stock market. I don't like to invest, you know, crypto is fun to play with. I like to invest in small businesses, right? So like I'd be much happier giving any of my savings to like a small business owner or a food truck owner. If I lose that money, the way I look at it is that's a tax write-off, right? If I lose $5,000, that's $5,000 less I have to pay on taxes at the end of the year, but I get, just gave somebody the opportunity to build a business, right? That's more important than just giving that $5,000 to the government. That's, that's really good. That's really good insight for people listening too. what, what uh, gets you to that conclusion? Why not play the stock market as much as other people that have that, as many businesses as you do rather than, you know, giving it to other small business, like people that aspire to it? Well, I, I would, I would play like the smaller stocks, but I, but like the, the, the big blue chips, they, all they're doing now, it's just, I don't like their behavior. I don't like the way that they're, they're utilizing, you know, they're driving up stock prices. Um, I, I, I think they're way overvalued. I think everything's overvalued right now. I think it's a game of hot potato with a lot of private equity. Um, but, but more importantly, I don't think that they have the values of America in mind. They're not the backbone of America anymore. I think that they've merged with the government and why the heck would I invest in the government? Mm. Good point. Real talk. Uh, you got any other questions, Rob? Yeah. Well, when you talk about uh, small businesses again, what did you? Is Texas or is Houston going to be the first one that you have here in Texas, or do you have other yep. restaurants? Yep. Yep. It'll be the first one. So why Houston, if you don't mind us asking? Well, just by virtue of the connection with Mac, and and because of that, I've now like fallen in love with Houston. This deal, we've been with them for a couple of years now, so I've been in and out of Houston a ton. Next time I'm out, we got to hang out. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, I heard on Michael Berry's podcast, he said. Um, he said he wants to have you over to his crib and invite some some special people. And I know he was talking about me when he, <laughs> when he said special people. Yeah, when, when he talk about those. That, you know, when he finds out we're part of the same prep school circuit, you know. Uh, yeah, he's no, he gives me a hard time about that. So uh, let's not let's not remind him. <laughs> uh, Man, I still remember going to Petty all the time for sports. I still I can't believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's a um, it's a crazy thing. Like anytime I hear anybody's from Jersey, I always like. Man, you know, what exit off the turnpike? Or are you near Freehold Mall? You know, just like yeah. random stuff like that. Uh, there's always. You, that. Did you ever get up to Pingree up in Martinsville, Bernardsville area? No. Mm -mm. I just remember. By like Wardlaw. You, let's see, you guys probably played like Wardlaw, Hart, Hartridge. We, we played a Blair, Lawrence, Blair yep. Lawrenceville. Yep, Lawrenceville Prep. I know all those. Yep, yep. 
Yeah, those are the main ones I could remember off the top of my head. Yeah, because you guys were a little bit more down south, but... Mm -hmm. Some people are like, who are you, Chingo Bling? Hey, man, look, I am Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. <laughs> uh, I was never really political, but hey, just like Chef, um, sometimes, you know, situations make it to where you can't stay silent forever. And that is part of what, you know, I want to thank you for, for all the things you do in terms of whether it's food, uh, a lit Twitter feed with uh, with amazing photos, um, a lot of good information that you give on podcasts, like, you know, sauce is boss, and you got to let your sauces contrast and all this beautiful stuff. But, you know, the giving back and adding to the to the conversation and giving, you know, giving your perspective as as a business owner who understands, you know, the, the whole supply chain and understands things from from the grassroots up. So that to me is like one of the the dopest things of, of all the stuff that, that you do and please Thank continue. You. Yeah. Please continue to do that. Uh, we look forward to Slapfish coming to Houston. It's going to be ridiculous when, when, the, whether it's a soft opening or grand opening, um, you know, trust me, it's going to be crazy.